How we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show we're going to be talking about last night's Premier League games. There was only two but there was a lot of talking points. Sheffield United against Spurs and Manchester City against the current champions Liverpool. Uh, we're also going to be talking about Arsenal because Mikel Arteta has said uh, that we will not be selling any of our prized assets to raise funds for any new transfers. I represent my fucking self. How we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So the first place we're going to start are last night's Premier League games and the first one of the evening was Sheffield United against Spurs. And what a humiliating evening for Tottenham. It's not easy going to Sheffield United away, is it? And um, yeah, 3-1 was the score. Uh, but there was one real talking point in this game. And uh, Berg put Sheffield United ahead in the 31st minute. I'm already laughing, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, Spurs literally went straight up the other end and equalised Harry Kane but VAR ruled it out <laughs> now Lucas Moura picked up the ball and uh, he tried driving at the heart of the Sheffield United defence and he was pushed over while he was on the floor after getting pushed over the Sheffield United defender went to clear the ball and it hit Lucas Moura's arm and ricocheted into the path of Harry Kane who scored VAR got involved and they ruled it out for handball. <laughs> I'm not even joking. If Lucas Moore had fell over of his own accord, then it would be, by the letter of the law now, handball and rightly ruled out. But he was fouled. He was actually pushed over. <laughs> I'm trying to stay neutral and not laugh, but... <laughs> That's got to be one of the worst decisions I have ever seen in my life. He was pushed over. The Sheffield United player blasted it from literally a yard away into him. He physically couldn't move or do anything. And VAR ruled it out for offside. Oh. And um, Jose was not impressed. Uh, second half got underway. Uh, Mousse um, put Sheffield United 2-0 up um, and then McBurney uh, made it 3-0 and then like I said Harry Kane scored in injury time to make the scoreline look a little bit more uh, respectful but it was a humiliating evening for Spurs um, and they stayed below Arsenal and Jose Mourinho in his time at Tottenham I honestly don't know what this guy is doing some people wanted this man at Arsenal are you mad? Behave yourself. He was finished years ago. Tottenham have got rid of their most successful manager for somebody that's finished. Before he even went to Manchester United, he was finished. If you could not see that, so many people were living in the past of what Jose did back in the day. You know, if we all had that mentality, we would have wanted Arsene Wenger to stay at Arsenal. If we kept remembering the Invincibles and the trophies he won in his first period and everything else. It was like Jose Mourinho. He was brilliant in the beginning. Now he's finished. He's washed up. It's done. And I don't know what Spurs are going to do because um, they want to sack Jose. they got to pay a lot of money. And they ain't got none. They've already had to borrow God knows how much from the Bank of England. So... Um, yeah, good luck with that. It looks like you're stuck with him. And um, yeah, they uh, stay below Arsenal, like I said. And um, it's not a great evening for Tottenham. And then we move on to the evening game. And it was Manchester City against the new champions, Liverpool. And uh, Manchester City had to do a guard of honour before kickoff, And it was as though that pissed them right off. Because they absolutely battered Liverpool 4-0. De Bruyne, Sterling, Foden... And an Oxalay chamberlain own goal. And I'll tell you something, it looked like Liverpool were still pissed. They were still celebrating. I don't know whether they even had alcohol in their drinks bottles on the drinks break. It was just an absolute mauling. Manchester City came out from the very beginning, like, straight out. 
And um, they even had a goal disallowed as well, which would have made it even worse for Liverpool at 5-0. Um, but they certainly laid down a marker and, you know, sent an ominous sign that they're going to be challenging next season to Liverpool and they're not going to have it their own way. Um, what did I tell you lot about Liverpool? And uh, once you've won the league title, people saying that they're going to have a high level still because they're chasing this, you know, record points total and everything absolute rubbish I'm not listening to that crap all right Liverpool's priority is winning the Premier League that was their sole objective that's what they wanted to do all right reaching this bonus points and whatever it is is a bonus that's it their main objective has been achieved they're not in the Champions League they're not in the FA Cup they've got nothing else that can raise their levels you know pride that's about it but it's so difficult to raise it when you've already completed what you've set out to achieve. Their season's done. You know, if you ask the players now, do you want to go on holiday? They'll be like, yeah, bye-bye. See ya. It's as simple as that. And it just shows how difficult it is. You know, that's two defeats this season now. How many more will Liverpool have before the end of the season? Don't ever put this team in the same breath as the Invincibles or Manchester United side that won the treble in 99 or even the first title under Jose Mourinho with Chelsea you know back in the day please don't they're not even in the top three so um, that's how difficult it is and like I said Manchester City brilliant performance um, I'm hoping that over the next few weeks they bag an absolute bag full of goals and they um use up all their goal scoring credit before they play Arsenal in the semi-final. <laughs> oh, because it takes out the way they play tonight. That's going to be tough. My word, they look good. But it is what it is. And uh, Liverpool, yeah, I think they're going to have to um, go off and have some more drink tonight because they'll need that to forget about that one because that was diabolical. Champions or not, that's humiliating. And um, if you're just trying to brush that under the carpet and make out it don't bother you as a Liverpool fan or even Liverpool players, manager, etc., trust me, that'll bother them. It will certainly bother Jurgen Klopp. He won't be happy about that in any way, shape or form. Um, but like I said, it is what it is. And uh, Manchester City get the victory very, very comfortably. Uh, next piece of news. Um involves Arsenal and uh, Mikel Arteta has been speaking um, to the press before the Wolves game and um, he was speaking about transfers and everything else and he has said uh, that Arsenal cannot sell their prized assets to raise funds for new recruits this summer. Um, it goes on to say that the Gunners have been linked to a number of players in recent weeks, uh, most notably to Atletico Madrid midfielder Thomas Partey. Uh, while the club broke their transfer record to land Nicola Pepe uh, last summer, that deal was structured over a period of time so that all £72 million was not paid in a lump sum. Uh, such figures um, appear to be out of reach of Arsenal at the moment, which has led to speculation that some players would have to be moved on to fund any big money summer signings. Uh, but Arteta, who saw his sides uh, win their third game in six days with a comfortable 4-0 win over Norwich on Wednesday, does not feel that that is the right approach. Um, asked if the club would have to sell to bring in new players, he replied, we don't know how the market is going to be. Obviously, we are putting different plans together to see what we are going to be able to do. At the moment, the uncertainty is still big. Uh, we have seen different things. The way that Chelsea is dealing with the market is different to the rest of us at the moment. Uh, but Bayern Munich as well, they have been really aggressive. So I don't know. But if you ask me, uh, we cannot be a team that has to sell our best players to try and bring in and improve our squad. That's for sure. Um, so yeah, it's pretty evident. And um, he's got a very, very clear message to the board or anybody that may think that we have to sell any prized assets to bring somebody in. Got no problem with selling players that Mikel Arteta doesn't want and he feels that we can improve on. You know, that could be the likes of Hector Bellerin. That could even be the likes of Gwendozi. 
You know, there's so many players, Socrates, Ainsley Maitland-Niles. You've got no problem with that. What I think he's referring to here would be an Aubameyang. You know, players like that. Um, you don't want to be selling them to try and bring someone in. It's like, you know, one step forward, two steps back constantly. Um, and that's been one of Arsenal's biggest problems. So it's really good that Mikel Arteta can identify that. He can actually look at certain issues that are going on uh, within the club and he can say, yeah, that's not right. I don't, you know, want that to happen. I don't need this. I need that. And he's got a very, very clear picture of what he wants to do at Arsenal. And that's the message that I'm getting. Um, you know, you look at the interviews and everything and what he says, that is definitely the message that's coming across that, you know, he knows what players he doesn't want anymore at the club. He knows who he wants the club to sell. He knows what players he wants to keep and what players he wants to restructure and rebuild around. He will know all of that. So, um... It's going to be very, very interesting because we've seen so many rumours yesterday um, about Thomas Partey. Um, you know, that the deal is looking very likely to get done. And um, I'll tell you something. Yeah, I'm going to have one hell of a party if we um, end up sealing that one because he is absolutely monstrous. What a player he is. And that would be a big statement of intent. But I don't want us to just go out in the window and buy one player like him and that's it. And, you know, it's like putting a plaster over a massive hole. It's not going to cover it. So, you know, you add a Thomas Partey, a Dea Upper Meccano, etc, etc. Then you're really, really starting to talk. And, you know, we can really start looking forward and building for the future because that's what we want to do. And that's what Mikel Arteta clearly wants to do. He wants to build for the future. He wants to restructure everything and go again. And it's as simple as that. I can't say any more. Um, so there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. As usual, let me know in the comment section what you think about today's topics. Um, later on today, um, this evening, actually, there will be a preview to tomorrow's game against Wolves. Um, of course, there's no DT's Daily over the weekend. Uh, we will be back for that show on a Monday um on saturday um for the wolves game you can catch me on AFTV as you always do for the watch along um sunday comes along and then there's going to be uh player ratings and then monday we get back into the cycle again of the normal weekdays which is dt's daily and then i think we've got a preview coming out monday for the game against leicester which i believe is on tuesday mad these games are coming so rapidly at the moment but you know what after three months or so of no football it's good to get some back so it is what it is we'll deal with it um if you're new around it of course hit that subscribe button and do make sure you smash a like on this video i will see you a lot soon i'm out of here